Hey, welcome back everybody, and today we are going to take a look at the new Cola Peninsula map for DCS. So stick around. Alright, now as I mentioned on Sunday, I picked up the Cola Peninsula map, but I have yet to fly it, and that still remains true as of recording this. This is going to be my first time flying on this map, and I'm going to take you guys along for the journey. So. This is the most recent addition to DCS as far as terrains go. Uh, it is not the largest map uh, as far as dimensions go. Uh, based on what they've published, it is 1400 kilometers east to west and 1000 kilometers north to south. Now what that translates to is 756 nautical miles east to west and 540 nautical miles north to south. Now the Kola Peninsula map is not the largest as far as flyable area. Now how about hard drive space because this is a concern for some. Here is where the Kola Peninsula map clocks in as far as hard drive space and holy that is a lot of hard drive space. This map in its early access state consumes 148 gigabytes of hard drive space that is not a typo that is the actual hard drive space on my on my drive where i keep dcs now orbix has said that they um as more areas get fully detailed the hard drive the space requirements will go up uh, however they're going to try to optimize it so that the impact to hard drive space is, is as minimal as they can make it but that is a lot of hard drive space and it may already um, be off-putting for some if they don't have the room for it. So speaking of detailed areas, let's look at a map that's been put out uh, showcasing where exactly the high detail areas are and the low detail areas are. And we can see here on this map, and it's highlighted in green, that a, uh, a, a sizable area of what is now modern day Russia, which would have been the Soviet Union back during the Cold War, uh, a good piece of Finland, and a very small chunk of Sweden there at the southwest region of the green shaded area. And we can see there's a somewhat limited number of airfields. That may be a problem for some mission makers. I'm gonna leave a link to a video done by Enigma that has addressed some of the concerns for mission makers, especially uh, because he runs uh, a popular multiplayer server called Enigma's Cold War. So with this out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into an aircraft. Now, what I will do is I will fly in the high detailed areas and then I will fly again in the lower detail areas and we can see both sides of this map and go from there. So. Let me get into a suitable aircraft, and I think we'll pick uh, somewhere near Murmansk. Alright, here we are at Murmansk. This is in one of the high detailed areas, and just so you guys are aware, the, I do fly and record all of my DCS stuff in 4K, so uh, if you guys have a 4K display, you guys can enjoy it in that. But we're going to fly around, and uh, this is my first time actually seeing the map. So far so good, the, the initial load uh, coming into the map, uh, it did take a little bit for, since this is the first time loading the map, it did take a take a little bit for my system to get all the textures uh, preloaded, but other than that, I'm not picking up any stutters or anything on the map, and so far it's looking pretty good, and the nice thing is, it's not desert. Not that I mind the desert map so much, like Sinai, Persian Gulf, and Syria, but this is a nice change of pace from all the sand. And it's been a minute since I've been in this thing. Gear up. So this is around Murmansk. I know this is a major navy uh, navy base. There's a very large Navy base here for the Soviet Navy, now the Russian Navy. I think Polyarni is one of those two. I don't recall where exactly Polyarni is, but yeah, Hermansk is right here. And I'll be looking forward to when we get some winter textures for this, uh, 
for this map because the the winter time is a nice little uh, nice little change also. But it's this is looking pretty nice so far. I'm liking this, and like I said, the this area is the high detailed area, and it's looking pretty nice. And again, I'm not picking up any sort of performance issues or stutters. Oh look, got something already moving. I do have civil traffic turned on. I think it's at low on my machine. But that looks like a little train down there. It's got a little life to it. I kind of like this. Check this guy out. Thank you, Petro. It's running on a couple of sets of rail tracks down there. Nice engine, a flatbed, and two tank cars. They even got the uh, the map textures there for the uh, the Heinz uh, moving map display. That's a nice touch. That's ready to go even in early access. All right. Well, this is the high textured areas from ground level on a helicopter. Let's go check out the low detail area. Alright, here we are over here in the Huey and in the low detail area according to that map that we saw earlier. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick up into a hover. I do dig this grass effect that Eagle Dynamics added a while back. That's a very nice touch. Here we go, let's just pick up and take off. It definitely does, let's see, once we took off there, it does look a bit less detailed than where we were over near Murmansk. Yeah, overall, I even this area of the map, it's, it's, it's looking nice. Now, the size of the map, I think, will play out well, especially for large, like, large-scale scenarios. I mean, this is one of the first maps, other than um, the Caucasus map, where we got anything around this, uh, what would have been the Soviet Union, you know, the height of the Cold War. I could easily see some good Cold War scenarios on this map. Especially with the uh, the Phantom right around the corner, that's due out by the end of the month, and I'm really excited about that one. So overall, I'm liking this map. Even this, uh, even the low texture areas, um, it really doesn't look all that bad. I'm, and keep in mind, this is at 4K. Yeah. Alrighty, so. We've seen the map from down low now in both areas. Let's go up high and check it out in some of the jets. And what better jet that I can think of? Let's move over to the Vigan and, and check out how this map looks uh, near the coast and in the mountainous areas. All right, here we are in the Vigan and we are over at the Bodo airfield, which is in Norway. And that is on the western side of the map. Now, looking around at the map, there is a bit of a lack of airfields. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think that's it. 
Yeah, so far I'm only counting 12 airfields. So there's a bit of a shortage of airfields. But definitely room to grow in here. That's for sure. All right. Let's get the Vigan off the ground and let's check out some of the coastline and the mountainous areas. I'd say they got the uh, the elevation changes with all the with all this mountainous area. It looks really nice. Again, this is something I would really love to see in winter time setting. Is uh, like the channel map looks really good with the uh, the winter texture set. Uh, Caucasus does as well. Yeah, I'd say this, uh, my only misgiving so far to this point is just the hard drive size. It's 100, nearly 150 gigabytes, and it may even grow further than that. It's, it's probably the most, the biggest drawback that I can think of is just the hard drive size. Like, the textures, even at 4K, it's nice up here, and... I've certainly have seen worse in flight simulators, and I gotta say this this is fairly nice, even for the low detail area. That hard drive size, though, 150 gigs. Wow. All right. Well, so far we've seen high and low res down low in the ground with the helicopters, and low res area up high. Let's go check out the high detail area, and I'll pick a jet with a bit better visibility out of the cockpit. Alright, let's head over that direction. Alright, here we are back on the eastern side of the map. We're definitely in where the Soviet Union or Russian territory would be. And loading in on this side of the map, I am starting to get a little bit of stuttering. I mean, it's not bad, but it is noticeable likely because this is my first run on this map and uh, DCS is having to generate all the shader files for the terrain which that happens sometimes but over on this side of the map it's a bit nicer looking than where we just were with the Vigan and it definitely it's it's pretty nice Overall, my impression of this map is is good. I like this map so far from what I've seen. Uh, definitely a lot of potential for Cold War scenarios. My only misgiving with this map so far is the hard drive size. It's close to 150 gigabytes and it has the potential to grow as they flesh out more detailed areas of this map. And some of you guys may not have the room for it, and that's a shame, because it's, it is a nice map otherwise. I'm liking it so far. It's a nice break from having all the sand, uh, all the desert maps. And they did a really good job with the elevation. Uh, the way the terrain rolls around, it's, it's nice. So, would I recommend this map? I would say yes, but with that catch of if you have the hard drive space to spare for it. Alrighty. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this. I like this map. I had fun making this video. And with that, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.